Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got a short little knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the new CJRB Mini Pyrite. We've already done the Mika or the Mica, honestly, however you say that, which looks like it should be the Mini Pyrite, but it isn't. It's just a similar knife with a different blade shape. This is the actual Mini Pyrite, and it is, as you might imagine, the small version of the standard Pyrite. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a lot of words to say something very simple. Thanks so much to CJRB for sending this in for me to take a look at. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This is not an expensive knife, as you could imagine. It's very inexpensive. Honestly, it's a very fair price. I'm going to link it right down below in the description. You guys can check it out if you want to. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Yes, it does come in a lot of different colors. Even a crazy painted one. There's one that's like a it's like a red blade and a blue body. I'll let you guys check it out if you want. Let's go ahead and the reason I say this is going to be a short review is because for real, it, there's just not a lot going on here. And that's fine. It doesn't need to be. It's just not an overly complicated knife. Overall length of the mini pyrite coming in at five and a quarter inches. Blade length, two and a quarter. Cutting inch, honestly, 1.9 inches. A little tiny guy. How about some size comparisons? Any custom, uh, custom scales that you see in this section can be found down in the description under Original Goat and others. So up against the Demco AD10 and the AD20.5, obviously it's a lot smaller. How about up against the uh, standard CJRB Pyrite and the large Pyrite? I think this is probably going to be the most helpful size comparison. In fact, I think we should go, you know, Mama Bear or Papa Bear, Mama Bear, Baby Bear here, right? There's a quite a dramatic difference between number two and number three here. This is subtle. This is, whoa, you know, a little tiny, right? Cutting edge difference, quite a bit and substantial. I think maybe we get the idea there. And then finally, let's go ahead and just do Benchmade Group Tilling, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue and the... Um, the Hogue Deca, yeah. A lot of people ask me, when you do really, really gigantic knives, or you do little teeny tiny little baby knives, why don't you have other knives that are similar in size to compare to? Well, the truth is, is because not a lot of people would own those. Now, there's still a decent amount of people who might own something like the Baby Banter, right? But not nearly as much as people who might be familiar with one of the knives that I regularly show. The reason that I choose the knives that I do is because I know for a fact that an absolute butt-ton crap load of people own the knives that I use for size comparison. So this gives them an actual understanding of how big or small this, this knife is relative to something they are familiar with in hand. So that's why. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and do carry profile. Thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3. It is very thin. Length and height up against the PM2 and Pair 3. This is one of those knives that's so small and compact, you will forget that it's in your pants. You will probably wash this knife. And that's okay, it'll probably survive, but that's just how small it is. That, in my opinion, is a disadvantage to carrying a teeny tiny knife outside of, obviously, they just don't have the best ergonomics. But I lose them and I forget they're in my pants and... I remember one time um, putting the baby banter in a jeans pocket and finding it later in the same jeans pocket after like three or four wash cycles and thinking, how long has this been in there? <laughs> like It stayed there and that's great. But yeah, it's, it's been, it got washed multiple times before I realized it was still in the same jeans pocket, right? They're just, it's just that small. Now it's unlikely you're going to be as oblivious as me. That's an extreme scenario, but it, it really is tiny. Um, let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm going to get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. So what we're looking at here is a T8. Sorry, I had to rotate that just a little bit. We have a T8 pivot, obviously. We have T6 screws right here and T6 screws right here. T6 screws for the pocket clip. This will be very easy to dis uh, disassemble and maintain. I wish that they were larger fasteners than T6, but you can't always get what you want. And at least the hardware is minimal. What are we looking at for materials? As of right now, 
I, I see a lot of aluminum. I, I'm I'm certain that if they don't have it already, there's an Ultim. I'm more than certain they will do G10 and Micarta, right? That's just what they do. Uh, they probably will also make a steel one. As of right now, in this very moment that I'm recording it, which is probably a couple of weeks before you guys are actually seeing it, uh, evidence of that by the date on the pinned comment in the comment section, um, as of right now, they're just all aluminum, which I think is perfectly fine. I really don't have an issue with that. But at some point, tag string, right? Something like uh, what you guys did, CJRB, what you did here with the uh, premium Echo. Yeah, that's really nice. You should definitely do that with some of your budget knives. That would be really, really cool. The weight on this guy, we have AR RPM 9 in aluminum, by the way, and then we do have some steel cartridge liners that have been milled out for weight reduction. The weight is trivial. I honestly, it doesn't make any sense to even compare the blade length to weight ratio because you're under two ounces. Under three ounces is where I start to not really care too much about balance. Under two ounces to me is trivial. I don't care if I'm looking at a one ounce knife or a 1.72 ounce knife or a 1.83 ounce knife. It doesn't matter to me because it's under two ounces and this is in the zone of I'm probably gonna forget that it's in my pocket, right? The difference between this and a plastic bead that my daughter might use to make a necklace out of is is no different, right? It's the same thing. It doesn't register. So let's just say it's very, very lightweight. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness here real quick. Uh, blade stock thickness on this knife is coming in at 190, 89 thousandths. Very, very thin as it should be small knife. You're not going to be doing any hard use with this. Speaking of, I know you guys want to see that gauntlet test because it is a button lock. Little teeny tiny thing. Now the, the, but the spine lock test matters even less for this because I can't imagine too many scenarios where you are really going to be putting a substantial amount of, well, I'm going to give it a good whack here. I just, look at that. I really just smacked my gauntlet into that aluminum there. <laughs> yeah. CJRB makes a good button lock. RIP <laughs> coating on the aluminum there. That's the, the downside of um, um, using a, a steel gauntlet. But the point of that, as cringeworthy as that was, the point of that is to prove that CJRB knows how to do a button lock, even when it's on a teeny, teeny, little beanie weeny little pocket knife like this, that they probably know that no sane person is ever going to use for anything substantial, right? Still, it's this, probably the exact same ge geometry they use for all of their button locks. Um, but did that just wipe? Oh, for a second there, I thought it just wiped off. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, type 3 hard code anodizing, which is absolutely what this is, is actually pretty tough. Obviously, though, the steel on the gauntlets is harder. So when you grind that against the uh, aluminum here, it's, it's going to come off, right? But normally, very durable. Anyways. Uh, lockup is still solid. Still no stick or anything like that. No lash. Doesn't feel like anything's out of place. Really, just good. I mean, you can depend on these. Okay, so I'm not a huge fan of little teeny tiny knives. Uh, I do like little teeny tiny knives that have good choke up positions though, and this one's okay. It's not quite as good as like the baby banter. I like that one a little better, but this one has a decent choke up spot. Can you reverse flick this and manipulate it? Yeah, actually you can. I, I'm, I'm really happy that they chose to do a slot on this knife versus a thumb stud or God forbid a flipper tab. Teeny tiny little knives with flipper tabs, I, I'm really sorry. You guys can like whatever you want, but I'm going to be a little bit mean here, all right? I'm going to be a little bit saucy. I think teeny tiny knives with flipper tabs are stupid. I think it's a big dummy dumb pile of dumb soup in a big dumb bowl with a big dumb spoon that people serve to themselves. I don't like it. I think they are ridiculous. Um, I think uh, it creates it, one of the biggest necessities on a little teeny tiny knife is enough ergonomic room to where you're going to be able to use it safely. And when you have a big dumb unicorn horn sticking out of the frame like this, all you're doing is eliminating, uh, you're eliminating um, really necessary ergonomic space, right? Personally, I don't really like little tiny knives in general, being honest with you guys, but I know a lot of you do. So, to be fair, uh, I, I think that if you're going to carry a little teeny tiny little knife, which it does definitely have its place in this world, right? Um, the best way to do it is to create as much ergonomic space as possible and, uh, and, and create ergonomic space that is safe for the end user, right? 
Um, so it, it, a flipper tab to me is, especially if you have something in front of the blade, if you have nothing in front uh, of the flipper tab, then you're forced back here, which means your grip zone is limited. If you have a choil in front of the flipper tab, right, then you are really mashing your finger up into, in my opinion, an, an incredibly unsafe zone. With this area being more open, you can kind of rock back just a little bit and not be resting right on top of a flipper tab. So there you go. There's my two cents on that. I'm sure that I'll get your two cents in the comments. Ergonomically, it's bad, but that's because it's small, right? I'm not going to say it's good for two fingers or it's good for two and a half fingers or three fingers. I'm going to say ergonomically, it's bad. And that's just part. It's just nature of the beast. That's okay, right? People who carry smaller knives, I think are, are kind of going to get that. But manipulation to deployment really is pretty good, right? I and mean, we didn't really cover the action, but the the button lock allows the knife to drop, which I wasn't really expecting. Uh, and being able to manipulate and deploy the knife, not so much with your thumb, but using the middle finger, if you don't get your index finger in the way, is actually better. Most of the time, that's not the case. Usually the thumb is the more reliable means of deployment, and you only use your middle finger if you want to be fancy. In this case, I think it's actually one of the more reliable ways to open it outside of opening it like a normal sane human being with two hands. The blade shape is about as ideal as you can get for a teeny tiny little knife like this. It's shaped like a utility box cutter, right? A little bit more sheep's footy, but still it's the same idea, right? The truth is, is that somebody like me, a regular Joe who doesn't do any like superhuman bushcraft, like ninja move, doesn't do any grappling hook or infiltration of submarines or all of that. They don't fight any dragons in the back alleys of Walgreens, anything like that. A pocket knife like this is going to get me through my day. Um, and honestly is, is probably still slightly too much blade for what I normally use a knife for, right? Now, if you cut things that are very dense or require a longer cutting edge, then this obviously isn't going to work for you. I have a feeling that the vast majority of the people watching right now are just like me, regular people wishing they had a reason to carry something like the AD-10, and they carry it anyway because it makes them feel cool. And you know what? I get that. I carry my AD-10 because it makes me feel cool. But most of the time, all I'm doing is opening up other boxes that contain knives. So this will do just fine. And honestly, that's where it's going to be the best. I do like the choil not so much for choking up, but for bracing with my middle finger while I put my index finger down on what I'm going to call the nose of the blade and do my shaping or draw cuts. That's about the most complicated type of cut that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And this knife in particular is going to excel at that because the blade is very short and you have a what that translates to is is a lot of control with your index finger. So I like that. This is AR RPM 9, which if you didn't know is uh, CJRB and Artisan Cutlery's proprietary powder form steel. Uh, and uh, powder form steels are scarce, if not non-existent, in this budget knife world. Basically anything that's 75 or less. AR RPM 9 is essentially the only consistently found um, powder form steel in this territory. Um, what is it, uh, I mean, what type of steel is it? What does it relate to? It's, it's very similar to 9CR18MOV, so you think of it as a powder form 9CR18MOV. 9CR is not going to be uh, the winner of anything in any department, but it's a very good balance. So you have nice corrosion resistance, decent edge retention, very easy uh, maintenance, and decent toughness as well. It's very, very balanced. So a powder form composition means even particle distribution, which means that you, you just have essentially a better balance of everything versus the ingot form of the seal. So this is a widely accepted composition um, in, in knives that cost a little bit more. And for a knife that uh, at currently is running 40 bucks, it's plenty fine, right? It's, it's totally fine. I like that CJRB is adding a little bit of color flair with the lanyard hole thing, right? And I also like that it's out of the way. The lanyard hole to me is not an important element on a knife. I could take it or leave it. I'm not going to use it. But the fact that they uh, add a little bit of color there for everybody, whether you're going to use it or not, I think is kind of neat. You'll find that they have different contrasting colors on all of them. And some of them are just plain silver. So you can go that route if you want. They do have satin finished blades and they've got coated blades. They've even got painted blades. I like that they're doing a bunch of different stuff. I think choice is a big deal. Obviously, they're very successful between their large pyrite, their medium pyrite, right? Um, so they're doing a lot of different versions of everything. And I think that's a really, really good idea. 
there's really not a whole lot more to talk about. Everything else is pretty much exactly what you would think. A couple of standoffs. The lanyard barrel is in itself a standoff. Pocket clip is fantastic. I'm glad they went smaller and didn't try to jam the same pocket clip. That would have been so stupid if they would have taken the same pocket clip and just jammed it on the little guy. That would have been dumb. Obviously, they didn't do that because they've got smart people working there and they put a smaller clip on it. That's, that's great, right? It works just fine. Plenty of retention and you can mount it for lefty carry. We have a, uh, a little bit of shouldering there around the stop pin, which is great. Knife runs on bearings. I think that's a good idea for a smaller blade. Uh, no blade play up, down, left, or right. Very minimal stick, which is kind of to be expected with a button lock. No pivot lash and very consistent in here. And honestly, with the plunge lock being the detent, pretty nice. I think that's why the knife operates so well with, in terms of deployment. If the detent was any lighter, it would kind of be a pain. But it's a good detent. This is easy. If you like little knives, you'll like this. This is a good quality little tiny knife. If you don't like little knives, you won't like this because the price is fair, the materials are good, and the execution is also very good. It's a very reliable, dependable, daily micro knife. This will work. That's, that's legitimately what it comes down to. If you like little knives, you should probably pick this up, right? If you don't mind knives that are made in China, if you didn't know this is made in China, right? I feel like everybody knows that by now. You don't mind knives that are made in China, and you like little knives, this is a good one to pick up. 40 bucks, that's what it's on sale for right now. I think normally it's like 45, right? It's all fair, all very fair. Uh, yeah, it's good to go. This is gonna go on my cheap knives I like playlist. That's where it's gonna stop though because honestly, I prefer and generally recommend as at least a slightly larger knife, but this is still good for people who like the smaller knives and there's nothing wrong with that, right? You like what you like. That's gonna be pretty much it. Wow, we still managed to make a 16 minute video out of it. Thanks again to CJRB for providing this. I'm obviously going to keep this one now and not give it away because I just marked it up. But don't worry, they sent me like five of these, so I'll give away the other ones. Please, make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And have a great day.